Hey, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. This is exam prep, um, this uh, worksheet number seven, question 3A. So the purpose of this question is given a number, we want to return, uh, we want to write a program that will return true if its binary representation is a palindrome and false other ones. So what do I mean by this? Okay, so consider the following number. This happens to represent 10, or sorry, nine. Um, and uh, as we can see, it's a palindrome because it, uh, if I were to read it from left to right or right to left, it is the same uh, regardless, right? So left to right is 1001 and right to left is also 1001, okay? So, so that's it. It's kind of like the classic, like, uh, you know, palindrome. This is a palindrome problem, but on a bit binary representation. Um, uh, one thing to keep in mind for this problem that makes it kind of more interesting is that this is still a palindrome, okay? We ignore leading zeros here, okay? Because these zeros don't actually contribute, they don't change the value of the number in any way. So this is still a palindrome because the actual number is still 1001. And so we can't just um uh, we can't just basically go through all the bits of the um of the number. We need to identify basically, we need to somehow uh, account for the fact that uh you know we, we're only going up to the leading one, the leftmost one. Um and so this kind of makes you know. This maybe makes her approach this question a little more interesting than other palindrome questions you may have seen, because um, typically in a palindrome detection algorithm, we basically like will iterate from the left end and the right end and meet in the middle. Um, and while you could totally still do that for this question, it's actually not really too too big of a it's not super hard to do. Um, it's actually not the most convenient algorithm to use, and there are there's a um, better idea, there's a better approach for this as suggested by the skeleton code, as kind of in a way maybe enforced by the skeleton code, which is to construct the reverse of this number and then check if the reverse is equal to the um, to the original number, right? Because if I if it's a palindrome and I reverse it, then it's going to be um, then it's going to be the same. So let's clarify what that looks like. So we start off with like a blank number of just a bunch of zeros and then we iterate from right to left in this number, in the top number. And then we just add these bits into the uh, into the blank number. Okay, so I take the one and I insert it there. I take the zero, insert it, zero, insert it, one, insert it. Okay, and then I'm actually done, right? Because I've inserted all of the numbers, and we can see that because the same as a palindrome, they are equal. Okay, so this approach seems to work, right? Because it's a palindrome, so if I reverse it and then try to check if it's equal, it's going to work. Uh, but this begs two natural questions, right? This approach. Um, the first question is okay. How do I actually get like the um, how do I get like the current how do I how do I actually like get the bits out of this number right how do I get the zeroth bit the first bit the second bit etc. The second question begs is how do I know when to stop my sort of iteration or whatever right how do I know when to stop going through the number because you know if we if we had actually continued past this one and started adding zeros this would have broken because suddenly this number would be you know bigger than that right um, and so that's problematic uh, so we need to know when to stop. But as it turns out, both of these questions have the same answer, or they're resolved in the same way. Okay, so we must recall what is like the classic way, or what is like probably the most like. There, there's a few ways to do this, but what's like the most definitive way to get a number? Well, the most simplest, or to get a bit out of a number. The simplest way is to suppose you want to get the kth bit out of the number. You shift the number to the right by k bits, and then you um, you uh, you mask it with one. Right, that works because um, because you first the shifting it by k bits moves the kth bit into the rightmost position, and then if I mask it with one, um, then if it's if if that bit then like it's going to zero out first of all all of the bits to the left to the rightmost position, and then it'll keep the bit in the rightmost position because if it's a zero then it'll continue to be a zero, and if it's a one you're masking one with one, so that's a one. Okay, so and this actually okay. So that's how it deals with, that's how we've dealt with the first question. But how does this deal with the second question? Well, um, when you actually, as it turns out, uh, when you get to the leftmost bit, right? When you're, when you're taking the leftmost one, sorry, the leftmost one, when you're taking the leftmost one and you're inserting it into the new number, um, and then you shift it out, the remaining number is going to always be zero, right? Let's think about that for a second. So the leftmost bit, the leftmost one is now in the rightmost position. So we know that the value and everything, because it's by definition of being the leftmost one, everything to the left of it is zero. So this number has to be one. And then I shift it to the right, okay? So now this whole number is just filled up with a bunch of zeros. Um, so we know that like this number therefore has to be zero. 
So this is kind of like our stopping point. That's how we know when to stop. Let's illustrate this with an example just to make sure that the logic is clear. OK, so I restarted. I've got a new blank number, and I've got the top number here reset to 1001. OK, and I start with the 1. So I mask it with 1, I get a 1, and I insert it into this number. OK, and then I'm going to shift the top number to the right. OK, now I'm going to mask the top number again with 1, and I'm going to get 0, and I'm going to shift the bottom number to the left and then insert that 0. And then, um, then I'm going to shift the top number to the right. Then I do the same thing again. I mask it with one, I get zero. I shift the bottom number to the left and I insert that zero. And then I shift the top number to the right. Notice how we got to that case I was discussing before. The leftmost one is now in the rightmost position. And so this, the top number is now just one. So I'm gonna mask it with one, get one, insert the one, and then shift it to the right. And Bob, your uncle, it is now zero. Okay. So I hope that that's uh, clarified, like basically the reasoning behind the algorithm. And so now let's get to actually coding this up. But as we're going to see, once we understand what the algorithm is, coding it up is really not a problem at all. OK, so here is the sort of skeleton code that was provided. We have a reverse, and we're going to, at the end, compare num to reverse. That's actually quite a significant bit of starter code, because that means that we cannot um, you know, one thing we discussed about in the theoretical algorithm is that we're going to be shifting the number to the right, which is going to change its value. So we actually, we need to basically get a copy of num, uh, I can call it a k, okay? And um, we're going to store it in there because we don't, we, we need to we, we, we need to make sure that the original num is preserved, its value is preserved. So we're going to copy its value down somewhere else so we can modify it. Okay. And then we need to basically figure out here the iteration um, across the number of bits. Uh, you know, where we do all of our steps. Um, and so I think the most natural thing to use for this is while loop. Um, and because uh, for loop, okay, like we, we would need to know the sort of end point in advance, so it's not very convenient. Um, so while loop is much better because we can basically just give it a condition that it checks every time. Well, I mean, okay, okay. I guess you could do the same thing with a for loop, but it's like, you know, like I don't know, syntactically it makes more sense with a while loop. Okay, so what's the condition? Well, it's exactly as we discussed before. As long as that is not zero, we are fine. We can continue going. OK, so what do we do now? Well, we just enact the two steps we said. So we need to basically uh, shift the reverse to the left and then insert the rightmost bit of k. So how do we do this? We, OK, so we go num, sorry, reverse is equal to reverse shifted by 1. Okay. Some operator. I, we didn't actually discuss this in the theoretic and the slides. Um, and then we're going to take the rightmost bit of the num, which is just that, right? OK. Maybe take a second and think about, OK, what kind of operator could you use to insert uh, this, this uh, digit in, or this bit in? OK, so basically, um, I think the most, strict, most maybe logical one is to use the for operator, because um, essentially, Right, like we, we are guaranteed that num masked one is either a bunch of zeros or a bunch of ones. If you mask it with a bunch of zeros, it doesn't change anything. But if you mask it with a bunch of ones, it's going to make sure that the rightmost bit is a one and everything else will, is how it is. Right, so it doesn't affect anything except the rightmost bit, which it guarantees to be a one if the num mask one is one, which is a connect to what we want. So that's a good operator to use. Um, okay, and then we just need to do the other last bit of thing, which is to shift this by one. To the right, okay, right, because um, this is like what is uh, basically keeping us uh, iterating through the number. So, oh, actually, maybe some of you noticed I made a mistake. So this should be k, okay? Why should it be k? Because k is the one that we're shifting to the right, right? So if we, if I was to continue to have num there and I was masking with one, um, that'd be really problematic because um, like I would just be taking the same bit every time because num doesn't change at all. Okay, it's only k that's changing. So we are shifting um, k. And I just realized I also made another mistake. This should be the left shift. And I was shifting. OK, wait, no, sorry. Sorry, that is the right, that is the right shift. OK. <laughs> um, OK, yeah. Okay, so just to clarify, let's go through the logic of the code one more time and make sure that it all makes sense. So OK, we initialize reverse to 0. That was given to us in skeleton code. We make a copy of num because we can't modify it. Uh, we go, OK, while the k is greater than 0. Uh, we set reverse equal to reverse left shifted by one, 
and then insert the rightmost bit of k. And then we shift k to the right by one. And then at the end, we check if uh, num is equal to reverse, because that's how you know it's a power jump. And so there you have it. So the code for this was actually not too complicated which shows you, I guess, maybe how sort of um, maybe powerful the bit operators actually are, because they let you do these like really cool, fancy algorithms and like not actually that much code, if you understand. It. So yeah, I hope that was cool. I hope that was enlightening. And I hope this helps with your studies. Um, have fun, everyone, and best of luck.